my name is Maria, for those who haven't met me yet. Hi Maria. Hello, hello. <laughs> uh, I am one of the members of, of the church. And you are very welcome, whether this is the first time you come to see us, you are very, very welcome, or whether this is the first time you come to see us. You are very welcome. Thank you for your patience all these years. So, um, we are going to do some notices before we start. Now, does anybody know what the Church of England is celebrating today? Come on, come on, guys. Come on, don't be shy, Alice. It's Pentecost, Alice was saying very quietly. Yes, uh, the Church of England is celebrating Pentecost, and we are going to be talking a little bit about it a bit later. Um, but yeah, let's just have the notices first from the door now, and then. By the way, welcome to those who will be seeing us a bit later on. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Thank you. Morning. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, welcome to um, Abby and Alfie. <laughs> <laughs> We brought Dad, Dad along today as well. So, <laughs> publishing uh, Bands of Marriage for Abby and Alfie this morning. Well, I published the Bands of Marriage between Alfie of Solomon of this parish and Abby Cotty of this parish. This is the second time of asking if any of you know any reason at all why they may not marry, you are to declare it. Marvellous. Let me just pray for Alfie and Abby and then we'll do some notices. Uh, Father, we say thank you for uh, Abby, for Alfie and uh, for Dad and Bob today as well, for their family and for the uh, household that they are creating together. Their commitment to one another, their faithfulness to one another to um, marry uh, in your presence, Lord. We ask for your blessing on them as they continue their worship. Okay. Right, I'll that next to you. Right, I'm just going to do some things. Are you sitting comfortably? Because there's a few. Oh, sorry. <laughs> okay. Uh, so the first notice is that um, at the end of June, uh, we will be running some transition sessions uh, up here at Redmond School for those who are currently in year six. There's about 90 year six students in the school. And uh, they're going to be moving up to secondary school. So we're going to run the transition afternoons for them in preparation for going up to secondary school. Uh, and we're going to be using some material from Scripture Union. It's a great opportunity. Uh, and at the end, we're going to give them a, a booklet to take home. It's, it's this booklet here. It's called It's Your Move, which they can take home and have a, a look through. And I've done this before. Uh, young people come back to me later having read this at home and talked about how helpful it was uh, just to help them kind of think things through as they're moving up to secondary school. Now, the cost of buying 90 books is around £153, depending on um, where, where we kind of get them from. Uh, the school head has said that they will contribute to that. So I'm kind of thinking that we'll pay half each, that the school will pay half and the church will pay half. But this is a, um, a this isn't a cost that is budgeted for. <laughs> so I, I'm asking that today, if you have any kind of loose coins or loose notes, <laughs> I'll have a basket at the door at the very end of the service. And if you could just, if you want to contribute towards buying these books, so there's one of these books for every one of the 90 year six students, then just pop it in the basket right, when you when you leave this morning. That would be really really helpful. And if there's, you know, if we, if we manage to take notes, then uh, we'll put that towards a second bouncy parcel from here today as well. Okay, if you can put them back uh, next slide up. Uh, so, we, uh, as the picture says, we have a training in prophetic ministry, again starting at the end of, of June. Uh, we, we, we try to keep Tuesday evenings free of other kind of church business, really, so that we can have some teaching, extra teaching on particular subjects um, or short courses. So, this is the next one, it's exploring the prophetic gift. It's actually for eight weeks, but we're going to do four weeks before the summer, then take a break and then four weeks 
after the summer. Um, so, if, so it doesn't matter if you can't do every single week, you will still get lots from it. Uh, yeah, so don't, don't, don't worry. If, if this is something that interests you, then come and tell me and get signed up to do this course on Tuesday evenings. You might remember that a year, well more than a year ago, 18 months ago, we did a sermon series on the gifts of the Spirit. And um, you know, Paul says, eagerly desire the spiritual gifts, but place a special emphasis on the prophetic gifts. So we, we just, it, it's about just learning really what is the prophetic gift and how do we use it? How do we use it in everyday life? And, how do I know the money you've got it? And if somebody gives me a prophetic word, how do I kind of weigh that? What, what do I do with it? The course is video-based teaching, time for discussion, so it's kind of split into those, uh, teaching, uh, discussion, and then time to give it a go, put into practice what we've been learning. Okay, we go to the next uh, slide that I finish then. Getting there. So this is uh, Ben and Lily. They really don't have shiny eyes. <laughs> they look really scary, don't they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so uh, Ben, uh, ben is 33, Libby is 27. Uh, they are joining us at the end of June. So these uh, are our, our, our new shiny curates. Um, who will be with us for uh, roughly around three years. Uh, have sharing ministry among us on a kind of full-time basis. They will be ordained on Sunday the 25th of June at Peterborough Cathedral in their afternoon. Now, I, I hope, I hopefully, you've read in the newsletters this week. Have you read their newsletters this week? Yes. 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 Always, always. <laughs> uh, my suggestion is that much like when we welcomed our Ukrainian friends, we've got a, a little hair package together. So um, I'd quite like us to just have a little care package that I can go into the with them in the week that they move in the parish. So who would like to contribute that? It could be chocolates, biscuits, cakes, gels, perfumes, bottles of wine, whatever. Whatever you, if you were receiving a care package, what would you like? So just bring those gifts on a Sunday morning and then I will go and give it to them in the week that they arrive there. And then my final notice is I actually need Maria to come and do this notice. But as Maria is... Um,
So, you know, if you want to be involved in any way, that would be brilliant. Okay, thank you. Okay, so um, it is Pentecost, and uh, we've got a little video to work for a couple of minutes to start with. Spirit in us, and that is the same spirit 
that ask the heart those people praying in tongues and going and spreading the gospel and doing miracles. It's the same spirit that we have in us. We just have to really believe that. Because I think sometimes when I speak for myself, I don't really give the Holy Spirit enough credit. So today, um, as we praise the Lord, let us see what the Holy Spirit is doing in us. We are worshipping the creator of everything. We are worshipping the one that has given us new life, that went to the cross for us. How amazing is that? So what I suggest is that you let the Spirit guide you in this worship that we are going to do now, through the whole of the service. But now, in music, let's just worship the Lord with everything that we have and with the Holy Spirit that we have in us.
got a couple of dry volumes and some cheese, cheese and pineapple on sticks. Okay. It's a proper, proper feast. Where the table is just endlessly, endlessly long and with a thousand glorious and gorgeous things. With your, your richness, your, your love, your lavish kindness is absolutely mind-blowing. <coughs> that we could be any of those things that we've said and we're still welcome at your table what an amazing loving king you are
you welcome us in the, and the love that you have for each one of us is exactly the same. It's undeserved, but it's full, and it's full of everything that we need, Lord, and it's, you don't need to love us, Lord. But it's done by grace. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Okay, I'm going to pray for the children as I go, and then we are going to have a time of sharing. Lord Jesus, I thank you for each of the children here today. I thank you for the beautiful dancing. I thank you for the beautiful voice. I thank you for the joy that they bring to the church. And I pray that as they go out to think about you, to learn about you, to have fun learning, Lord, I just pray that you will bless them, and that you will bless the leaders as well, Lord. That you will be guiding them all in learning more and coming closer to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Okay, God. See you later.
she felt that today in Pentecost, it was like, you know, in Pentecost, the Spirit came, and people were talking in different languages, and that was opening the Gospel to a lot of different people um, that probably wouldn't have heard it before. And uh, she, was, she felt that that was the same Spirit that was here today, um, and that was in the church. So, uh, and it's that community that we, that we are, and the way that we can bring the Gospel to other people, obviously, I am from a different community and I know that there are different people from different communities here and, um, and I think it's a blessing and it's much more, I feel much more enriched when I am with different people from different countries because there's so much that I need to learn and about their, their beliefs, you know, their, their Christianity and um, their spirit and so I thought that was quite powerful this morning. Anybody else? He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. 
He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. One day, at about three in the afternoon, he had a vision. He distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius, Cornelius stared at him in fear. What is it, Lord? he asked. The angel answered, Your prayers and gifts to the poor have come as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter. He is staying with Simon the tanner, whose house is by the sea. When the angel who spoke to him had gone, Cornelius called two of his servants and a devout soldier who was one of his attendants. He told them everything that had happened and sent them to Joppa. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading this morning is taken from the same chapter, verses 27 to 48. While talking with him, Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, You are well aware that this is against our law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objections. May I ask why you sent for me? Cornelius answered, Three days ago I was in my house praying in this hour at three in the, morning, in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send to Doctor for Simon, who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon, Simon the town, who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately, and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. Then Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favoritism, but accepts from every nation the one who fears him and does what is right. You know the message God sent to the people of Israel, announcing the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. You know what happened throughout the province of Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John preached. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil, because God was with him. We are witnesses of everything he did in the country, in the Jews, and in Jerusalem. They killed him by hanging him on a cross. But God raised him from the dead on the third day and caused him to be seen. He was not seen by all the people, but by witnesses whom God had already chosen, by us who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one whom God appointed as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was still speaking these words, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers who had come in Peter were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles. For they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Then Peter said, Surely no one can stand in the way of their being baptized with water. They have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. So he ordered that they be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked Peter to stay with them for a few days. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Bob. I trust you can all hear me. 
Yes. I can hear me too. <laughs> the thing about this morning's passage is that it's so long and detailed that it seems to me I don't need to preach a sermon at all. <laughs> if I just read the passage out, I think it's so clear. But don't worry, Dawn, I will actually preach a sermon. <laughs> it's all about Cornelius. Who's Cornelius? I, I believe this is the first of a series of characters in the Acts of the Apostles. So why is Cornelius so important? Well, Cornelius, first of all, was prepared by God. He was a centurion, and from his name we understand that he was actually Italian, a Roman soldier. I would love to have put a nice picture up on the screen of a Roman soldier, but I couldn't work out the way to do it, and it was too late anyway. <laughs> So a Roman centurion was in charge of about 60 to 100 men. He turned his back on the military temples and military gods, which were rather horrible. One of them was called Mithras, and they found a temple to Mithras in London some years ago. And to become initiated into that order, you had to stand and be bathed in bull's blood and lot of it. So it was all rather brutal. Instead, he turned from these gods and was seeking the true God of the Jews. Verse 2. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. Now, it seems to me that what he was doing was attending a Jewish synagogue, he and all his household. That included his family and his household servants. And they were all seeking God. And they had gone to the synagogue on a regular basis. And he was following the Jewish tradition of praying three times a day. So he was being serious about this. By this he showed that he was sincerely seeking God. Now in Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 it says this, And without faith it is impossible to please God, because anyone who comes to him must believe, first of all, that he exists, and secondly, he rewards those who urgently, uh, earnestly seek him. <coughs> well, Cornelius was definitely earnestly seeking the Lord, he and his household. But we've got to correct a misconception here. His activities do not earn him salvation. Instead, God knows that Cornelius is genuinely seeking him. So God sends his angel to answer what is in Cornelius' heart. Verse 3. <coughs> he distinctly saw an angel of God who came to him and said, Cornelius, Cornelius stared at him in fear. This is interesting. Whenever an angel from God appears to someone in Scripture, one of the first things the angel says is, do not be afraid. Because, let's face it, if we were to see an angel from heaven in bright shining clothes, quite plainly different from us, we would be a bit scared too, I think. Cornelius stared to be in fear. What is it, Lord, he asked. <coughs> the angel answered, your prayers and gifts to the poor have come up as a memorial offering before God. Now send men to Joppa to bring back a man named Simon, who is called Peter, who happened, of course, to be an apostle and also an evangelist. He is staying with Simon the Tanner, whose house is by the sea. Now this is not a very prestigious address. <coughs> I don't think 
tanners were weren't very well thought of in Jewish society. You had to have them because they were the people who cured skins to become leather, from which you made all sorts of things, including shoes. So here was uh, the angel saying, go to that address and fetch him. Thank you very much indeed. Now, God does not say that Cornelius' activities have earned him salvation. Cornelius is not yet a member of God's family. But God sees that he's ready to hear and receive the good news. So, he says, send to someone who can point him to the way of salvation. So notice, the angel doesn't say, God has seen your wonderful activities and he has booked your place in heaven. No. He said, God has seen your activities and seen the state of your heart and so sent to this man who will bring the good news of God to you. So God has prepared Cornelius. Now the other end of the scale <coughs> is Peter. So secondly, God is preparing Peter. Peter is prepared by God because there is a problem in Peter going to a non-Jewish person, a Gentile. But here was a totally new thing that God was doing. Jews would not go near a Gentile house, certainly not enter it. That would make them unclean. But God had dealt with that problem. Let's see how he did it. Here was a totally new thing that God was doing. Note the timing, verse 9. About noon the following day, as the messengers from Cornelius were on their journey and approaching the city, Peter went up on the roof to pray. So Peter was in contact with God as these unclean people were approaching. They were Gentiles, not Jews. <coughs> when he was on the roof, he had a dream or a vision, and he saw this amazing sight, a great sheet coming down from God out of heaven. And when he looked inside this sheet, what did he see? The heaven opened and something like a large sheet being let down to earth by its four corners. <coughs> It contained all kinds of four-footed animals, as well as reptiles and birds. And a voice told him, get up, Peter, kill and eat. Unfortunately, or fortunately, I don't know. We don't do the killing, but <coughs> most of us eat meat of one sort or another. <coughs> <coughs> So, get up, Peter, kill and eat, and Peter replied, Surely not, Lord. I have never eaten anything impure or unclean. The voice spoke to him a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and immediately the sheep was taken back to heaven. What on earth did it mean? He was this great sheep that God had sent down, full of animals of all different kinds, and birds, probably insects as well. And the voice from heaven said, Rise up, Peter, kill and eat. <coughs> Surely not, Lord, but I've never eaten anything unclean. God was making Cornelius and his household clean. While Peter was wondering what the was about the meaning of this vision, the men, sent, uh, the men sent by Cornelius found out where Simon's house was and stopped at the gate. So vision going on, travellers arriving at the same time, notice the timing. They called out, asking if Simon, who was known as Peter, was staying there. While Peter was still thinking about the vision, the Spirit said to him, Today is the day of Pentecost, we shouldn't be surprised at such things. The Spirit said to him, Simon, three men are looking for you. 
Get up and go downstairs. Do not hesitate to go with them, for I have sent them. So here's the two things. Peter prays, God sends people, messengers, unclean messengers to Peter. But Peter has been shown this great vision and God has said, do not call anything unclean that I have made clean. So God was making Cornelius and his household clean. Peter went down and said to the men, I am the one you're looking for. Why have you come? The men replied, We have come from Cornelius the centurion. He is a righteous and God-fearing man who is respected by all the Jewish people. A holy angel told him to ask you to come to his house so that he could hear what you have to say. See how it all comes together. <coughs> God had prepared Cornelius and now God was preparing Peter. Thirdly, Peter gets up and he goes to Cornelius' house. They stay the night, possibly they had to walk, and they set out the next day. So having arrived at Cornelius' house, he goes in. Peter went inside and found a large gathering of people. He said to them, you are well aware that it is against the law for a Jew to associate with or visit a Gentile. But God has shown me that I should not call anyone impure or unclean. So when I was sent for, I came without raising any objection. May I ask why you sent for me? You see, his whole attitude had been changed by God through this great vision of various animals being lowered down from God from heaven and God saying, if I have made them clean, they are clean. Cornelius answered that question. Three days ago I was in my house praying at this hour at three in the afternoon. Suddenly a man in shining clothes stood before me and said, Cornelius, God has heard your prayer and remembered your gifts to the poor. Send a job for Simon who is called Peter. He is a guest in the home of Simon the Tanner who lives by the sea. So I sent for you immediately and it was good of you to come. Now we are all here in the presence of God to listen to everything the Lord has commanded you to tell us. So he goes in the house and finds a whole crowd of people. Cornelius, his family, his household, everyone was there. He sees that God has already spoken to Cornelius. Peter goes to Cornelius' house. So Peter began to speak. I now realize how true it is that God does not show favor and favoritism, but except from every nation, the one who fears him and does what is right. Now again, let's go back and correct this wrong impression which is held by some people in the church. He does not say, God gives salvation to those who do right. Okay, everyone, go out, help the poor, do good, uh, speak nicely to everybody. And God will say, oh, pat you on the head. How wonderful you are. You come up to heaven. You're a member of my family. He doesn't say that. What he says, uh, what he does say is, God accepts, first of all, those who fear him, those who recognize God for who he is. Now, if we were to see God face to face clearly, the sight may well kill us. In the Old Testament, that idea is there, to see God and die. Because God's glory is so enormous, so fantastic, like a bright light shining on us, and it's so bright that we can't stand it. This is the glory of God. You and I will not see the glory of God until Christ returns and our bodies have been changed for eternity. And then we can look at God and come to Him, our Heavenly Father. But what He does says is that God accept those who fear Him. We recognize God for who He is. 
care about us? Do we truly fear God? Are we people who have given our lives to him that we may be his servants and he may make us his children? Those who fear him and God accepts those who do what is right. So it's not just empty faith, that we, but that we are living a consistent life with consistent with that faith. But he's still not saying such people are saved. He sent an angel in the light of these things. But the angel is not saying, okay, Cornelius, you're accepted by God, you have an open door to heaven. What is the angel commands Cornelius to send for Peter? Bearer of the good news. So here is the message from God. God has seen your regular prayers, your giving to those in need. He has seen the quality of your life. And as a result of that, he sees that your heart is in the right place. You really in your heart you want to serve God. So send for Peter. So Peter tells the good news. He says all the prophets testify about him, Jesus, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Trusting in Jesus as Saviour means those who believe in him. There is a nice phrase in Bengali, which I'm afraid I bored you enough, I know the language, <coughs> and this, in Bengali, uh, the idea here is that we totally depend upon, that's what believing in him means, we totally depend on him, our lives are given over totally to him. While Peter was still speaking these words, today is Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came on all who heard the message. The circumcised believers, that's the Jews who came to Peter, who had, were astonished that the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out even on Gentiles, for they heard them speaking in tongues and praising God. Now as far as I'm aware, maybe Dawn will correct me if I'm wrong here, but this is the only case where the Holy Spirit fell on people before they were baptised. God marking them out as His. As the Spirit fell, and you, they could see the activities of the Spirit in the lives of these Gentiles. Their mouths, their jaws dropped as they heard these Gentiles being filled with the Spirit of God. But these were extraordinary circumstances. So, as a result, many Gentiles were baptised that day. So what can we say in conclusion to this? I'm coming to an end. <clears throat> in a real sense, Cornelius is the father of us all, in one sense. The first non-Jew to re respond to the Gospel, although if you read your Bible carefully, you'll see that Philip had been sent to the Ethiopian official as that official travelled home in his chariot. He had been to Jerusalem, he had bought a, bought a copy of Isaiah the prophet, was reading it in his chariot, but he couldn't understand it. And so God sent Philip along to him to explain what Isaiah meant. But that's elsewhere. <coughs> so Jesus had given this command. Peter was called to go out of his comfort zone. And this was the command that gave, we've heard so many times. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, Jesus said. Therefore go and make disciples, note the next two words, of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So Jesus had already said to his Jewish disciples, 
go into all the world and tell all the world the good news of God's salvation which is through Jesus bearing our sins on the cross and that command still stands notice that Jesus had already said that God himself is the Lord of the harvest that's what Jesus said so we are called to pray that means that evangelism is not our responsibility it's God's responsibility but we are to offer ourselves to God as those who bear that good news to others <coughs> so that command still stands pray to the Lord of the harvest that he will send out laborers into his harvest so we are called to pray that the Lord will send laborers and we like Peter must be prepared to be the answer to that prayer to go in the Lord's name so if we pray we must also be ready to go but we take our orders from God who is the Lord of the harvest so here is a challenge for us this morning are we praying and are we prepared to go let us pray <coughs> we thank and praise you Lord our God that you are the Lord of the harvest it is not up to us to plan in detailed ways that are your responsibility we thank you Lord that you give us the responsibility you call us and you direct us into your harvest fields and so Lord we open ourselves to you we pray to you that you will send out laborers into your harvest and we want to say to you here am I send me in Jesus name
that this really is from you, Father God. I don't want to blaspheme you in any way. But I pray that if this person is here, that you would give them the courage, Father Lord, to surrender. They've got nothing to hold on to. What they're holding on to is only like a pride, a human pride. And you just want them to surrender that which is nothing in order to give that all in exchange for what is nothing. I'd encourage you, whoever that is, if that is somebody, to, to ask for prayer, to go to the back for prayer, or come to me for prayer, or, or, or just message somebody. But you know what? This is so real, and the Holy Spirit is so powerful. God is bigger than all of us. If you only knew my sin, He can even use me. Even me. He can even use me. So I just encourage whoever that is, if you didn't hear that properly, whoever that is that has been called to surrender and to allow God to move in their life and to accept His Spirit. And I pray this morning, that thing you're hanging on to, that thing that's pride, I'm repeating because I don't think you could hear me, but that thing you're hanging on to, that's just human, physical pride. That's all it is. And you know that counts for nothing. But what God has for you is everything. And what the Holy Spirit can do through you is just immense. So I just encourage whoever that is or if it speaks to all of us let's just think on that and I just say thank you Jesus thank you Lord and once again Lord I pray that that really be a word from you and if that isn't that it be disregarded for Lord we don't want to grieve your Holy Spirit for that is such an important thing to not grieve your spirit and Lord if that's you Father then I just pray for your wonder, your miracle, this amazing thing that you're going to do today. And thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, if, if that was anything else in the service has spoken to you, or you would like to see prayer, um, uh, I will ask men, um, and I will go to the back. And, you know, please, please, don't leave this this place without praying with somebody. Be encouraged because God loves you, because Jesus surrendered and he went to the cross to give us a new life. So um, I thought that um, as the disciples were in community and they went out to um, to speak to the people and to bring the gospel to all the nations, I thought that we could bless each other all together. So we are going to sing the blessing song. Okay. And, um, and please make sure that you look at somebody so that you can bless them, so that you can be blessed by somebody this way. And please, if anything comes in the week, obviously, don't um, uh, is on holiday, but I'm sure that you can contact Rob or one of the wardens and they will point you out in the right direction. But please, please don't, don't leave anything that is in your heart today. Oh, yeah.